right, what's up, everybody? So I'm back up in the music store again, trying some horns, and I got with me the Eastman 850. This isn't a 52 one that everybody seems to like, but they don't have that one, so this is the 850 Rue, and also have the saxophone from Ishimori. If I'd have known I was coming up here to play this one, I would have brought my Ishimori mouthpiece and seen what that was all about. All right, so let's start with the one that does not have a high F sharp key. Let's start with the Ishimori. <laughs> Okay, so I got the Ishimori here, and this instrument, if I can show you this, there is no high F sharp key here, and it feels small like a vintage saxophone, like a vintage tenor, specifically a Mark VI. It definitely has that smallness feel to it. <laughs> super responsive. It's really responsive. I'm amazed at how responsive this instrument is. However, I am noticing that when I'm pressing the keys, I'm getting a lot of that vibrational transfer. This is one of the things that really jumps out to me as something that is going to bother me in the future, but that's a real nitpicky thing. I notice it more on either some vintage instruments or instruments that do not have um, the long ribs. This one seems to be a post to body instrument. We have metal. It looks like metal resonators here, I think. Okay, let me just play. <laughs> Okay, I'm used to having a high F sharp key. Yeah, this instrument is fantastic in its regime, but it there is an overwhelming amount of vibrational transfer. In this music store, I've been going back and forth in different rooms, but I can actually feel vibrations through the floor when I'm playing this. Maybe because of this specific spot I'm standing in, but I think if you're looking to replace your six, this is the one you want. Um, I am really falling in love with this instrument, but for me, there's a lot of the great playing characteristics about vintage horns that I don't like. And this one has all of them because this is clearly designed for someone wanting to place to replace those older instruments. All right, so uh, let me play this a little more. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, this is beautiful. Let me try the uh, 850 Eastman. <laughs> Okay, so now I got the 850 Rue, the 850 Eastman, and the layout of this is considerably different from the uh, <laughs> Mark VI-ish. The layout of this saxophone is considerably different from the feel of the Ishimori. It's comfortable. It's logical. Uh, let's play it and see what we got. It does have a high of sharp key here. We clearly have metal resonators. They look like brass. Okay, let's do it. Okay, this is a very responsive instrument. I'm getting an immediate response. Not as immediate as the um, Ishimori, but I mean, I'm not really here to compare these two. I just have them both. They've made some adjustments to the key layout here. It takes a little tiny bit to get used to, but it's all very logical. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it just has a nice feel to it. It's a little bit unusual. I would really like to try the Eastman 52 to see how that compares closer to the Ishimori. But um, this is a winner in terms of whether I would get one or not. I don't know. I have to listen to it back, but nothing about it is really jumping out as being like, yeah, got to have it. But it is a really nice saxophone. Okay, all right, this is a lot of fun. This is a fun instrument. If I had to pick one, I would probably pick... All right, so if I had to pick one of these saxophones, ladies and gentlemen, it would be the... I'll get back to that. But first, let me talk about this Eastman 850. I feel like this is where a cannonball should be with their research and development. I'm a little disappointed in the direction that cannonball is going with the cosmetic end of the saxophone, even though what they're doing cosmetically is absolutely breathtaking. No one else is even close to where cannonball is as far as the cosmetic end of saxophones are. However, that's just not the direction that I'm going. I mean, I've played Cannonball tenor saxophones exclusively for the last 22 years. This is the 22nd year I've been playing these, but 
I'm going in a different direction now, and that is ultimately what that's all about. But the 850 Eastman was just really nice. I appreciate them taking a risk with the different key layout. It feels really nice. It's got a nice thumb thing that's there for the uh, for the octave key. I feel like it pays off. I feel like the sound is nice and balanced. In fact, I feel like it reminded me of the Yamaha 875, but I like the Eastman more. If I had a choice between those, I would definitely pick the Eastman 850. Really nice saxophone. Okay, so let's talk about <laughs> the Ishimori Woodstone. If I did a blindfold test where I had like 10 Selmers and I had the Ishimori Woodstone, 99% of the time I would pick the Ishimori Woodstone New Vintage as the best Selmer. It really felt to me like the best Mark VI Selmer ever made, not even made by Selmer. That thing was just really, really incredible. I did have some issues with it, but <laughs> I think I proved my point here. Okay, so the Ishimori new vintage saxophone was absolutely spectacular. The more I played it, the more I found myself kind of falling back in love with vintage Selmers, specifically somewhere between like the late Super Balance Action and those early March Sixes, you know, those like really good ones that everybody wants. I felt like if you could make one of those instruments, which is what everybody thought the reference saxophones from Selma was going to be, but if you could make one of those with modern technology, modern machining, just this is what you would get. This is exactly what everybody is asking for in terms of having one of these vintage instruments redone with the intonation fixed because those instruments had some intonation problems. However, they didn't fix some of the other problems. And in all honesty, considering what this thing is, it really didn't bother me that much. And some of those things was just the vibrational transfer throughout the instrument was more than any other instrument I've ever played in my life. The ground beneath me was actually set in resonance. I could feel it vibrating when I was playing that instrument, which if you like an instrument that's giving you a whole lot of feedback and information, there you go, man, that's for you. Um, I don't usually talk about the price of these instruments because they're kind of all over the place and dealers can kind of set their own thing for some of them. But I've been seeing the Ishimori Woodstone without the high F sharp key. This is the more expensive one that has lower resale value for $4,700. I imagine the one with the high F sharp key would come in at around 45. That's definitely the one that I would pick. However, I did go to the Ishimori Woodstone webpage from Japan, and they have the price listed in yen, 510,000 yen for the one with the high F sharp key that I would like. And that translates to, in January of 2023, $3,800. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? I don't know how you can buy this instrument, but it was in English, so Maybe you can go directly to the website. I mean, I usually post links and stuff where I get a commission, but I don't get anything for the Eastman or basically I don't get anything that's not on Amazon or Woodwind Brasswind. I'll still post those links. Check out some stuff. They always have some amazing deals going. They got some New Year stuff that's still going on. So check that out. But even still, it's like, man, if I could get the Ishimori Woodstone for thirty eight hundred dollars with the high of sharp key, then for sure my my replacement for my cannonball, that search is over. I'll just deal with all the little weird tendencies that it has because it is a very, very special saxophone. And apparently they've been just hard to come by. There's not a whole lot of places where you can get them. But check out that website. Check out the Ishimori website and do the uh, calculation to translate whatever your dollars are from yen. All right. So if I did have to pick one as a winner, if I had to play a gig immediately, hands down, I'm picking the Eastman 850. That thing was just super comfortable. I could trust it. It wasn't gonna do anything weird. It's really balanced. The sound reminded me a lot of the Yamaha 875, but if I was comparing it to the 875, I would definitely prefer the Eastman 850. Maybe it's modeled after that one, I don't know, but I would definitely prefer the Eastman 850 over the Yamaha 875. 
But if I was playing the gig immediately, I would definitely pick that one. That's the safest one. However, if I was going to take one home, and let's assume that the Ishimori actually had a high of sharp key, I am definitely walking home with the Ishimori. It is absolutely, positively, most definitely the more special instrument. And in all honesty, it's one of the most special that I've ever played for them to be able to meticulously and accurately capture so much of that Selmer thing in their product at a low price also with what looks like excellent craftsmanship. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I got for you. If you like this kind of stuff, you want to support the channel, you can buy me a piece of cake. It's like a Kickstarter, Patreon type of thing, but you make a donation and that really really helps the channel grow. Also, I do have my Altissimo books for alto and tenor. I have my All Things Diminished book for all instruments. And most importantly, I have released my saxophone sound development for all saxophones that is available via the links below. That's all I got for you. Thanks for tuning in. See ya!